Hey guys, it's me again. Um, I just made a video or posted a video um, of how our homeschool year has gone and kind of an update on our 2018-2019 school year. Um, and I said I was going to make a video on um, what it is like teaching um, a student who has some learning difficulties and challenges, learning disabilities, learning differences, whatever you want to call it. Um, and just background info, I am Chelsea and I homeschool, well I homeschool one student right now. I have a three-year-old and my eight-year-old who is ending second grade, getting ready to go into third grade. And my eight-year-old has um, some diagnoses. He has ADHD, um, dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia, or dyscalcula, or however you say it. And um, I have ADD as well. So, or I guess they don't even call it ADD anymore. They just call everything ADHD. So, um, but yeah, so I was just going to make this video on kind of what that's like and just be really honest about how it's gone. Um, it is really challenging, not going to lie. And I do think that it is worth it if you can make it work. I think it's, I don't know if it's better or worse that I also have ADD and I'm teaching a child who has that difficulty as well. Um, yeah, it's, it can make for some, uh, challenging days. Um, we're both some very similar, um, in a lot of ways, although he's also very different and I didn't have any learning difficulties growing up. I had no issues in school. I went to public school, um, never had an, you know, bad grades, I always had straight A's. Never had any, you know, issues with being in trouble or anything like that. So we, just a little backstory, we sent my son to preschool, um, a private preschool or whatever, a church preschool, when he was four, and we just did one year of preschool, and because lot, there was lots of factors that went into that. Um, one, he, I stayed at home, so it was kind of like financially, it didn't make sense to put him in earlier than that. Two, he also had some um, immune system issues and got sick a lot. He had pneumonia several times the previous couple years um, before putting him in, in preschool, and our doctor didn't think it was the greatest idea either. So those are kind of the factors that went into that. Um, I was pregnant at the time when, I, when he started preschool. Um, I was due a month or so after um, the start of school or something like that anyway. And... Um, yeah, we wanted to give him a year to kind of transition before going into kindergarten. So, excuse me. Um, in preschool, they mentioned that he might need to be evaluated or we should look into that because he seemed to be having a lot of trouble with lots of things, keeping his hands to himself, paying attention, uh, not bothering others, socializing well with others, um, sitting still, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of that I felt like, okay, he's only four and, you know, he's a boy and, you know, that can be totally within norm the normal range. And I knew from a very young age, actually pretty much when I was pregnant with him, I did feel like he was extra energetic, you know, just like crazier than I was expecting. And he was very impulsive and just physical and rough and just wild basically um his well he still is but anyway and I felt like it was more so than others but I didn't really know because he was my first child so I didn't have really a comparison and we had moved out of state when he was four months old so I wasn't around our cousins or you know anything like that to compare him to he wasn't in a program or a school or anything so I really had no comparison until preschool and so um I really wasn't sure what to think and I knew he had a lot of um, anxiety, like separation anxiety and, and whatnot, um, and maybe some sensory stuff. He was an extremely, and still is, an extremely picky eater and was always kind of funny about textures of like clothing and things like that and blankets and whatnot. And um, so I had already kind of heard about sensory processing and that kind of stuff and had my eye on that. But um, yeah, so anyway, we got him evaluated through like the early intervention services or whatever it is through this, this, um, county. And they did say that he had, um, he needed an IEP. Okay. So they don't really like officially diagnose cause they're not really doctors or whatever, 
but they just say like their recommendations and they give the kids um, an IEP or if they need it um, to kind of get services through the school system. And so we started that with him in, in preschool and he had, um, gosh, an OT come and like a special ed type teacher person that worked with him one on one on just communicating not he wasn't speech delayed but just kind of getting along with other kids and prompting him and that kind of thing so that's what we did for preschool we intended to put him in public school kindergarten and when the time came it just didn't feel right it just didn't feel like it was going to be a good fit for him and we signed him up we went to preschool orientate or preschool kindergarten orientation all of that and this is turning into a really long-winded story. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, back to just sum it all up, we ended up obviously choosing to homeschool. So I think that was the best decision for him. However, like any first-time homeschooler, you really don't know what to expect. And what I was expecting, I don't know, just really didn't like... We've Anyway, we've discovered he's got these learning disabilities, so that's kind of where I'm going with this. I have ADD, too, so I'm a little bit all over the place, but I should have wrote this stuff down. Um, so now that we know he has all these things, he was diagnosed officially with the dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia um, about uh, two months ago, something like that, almost, like almost two months ago, um, and... Yeah, and ADHD, he was diagnosed with sensory processing disorder, ADHD, and anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder, a year, just over a year ago when he was seven. So, first question that I get frequently, do we medicate? No, we do not actually medicate for any of those things. Um, we do give him vitamins and supplements, including magnesium, um, omega-3s, and a multi, like a daily multivitamin, um, and a probiotic. Um, other than that, we don't medicate. We do also do essential oils. Um, he sees a technically a speech and a speech therapist, but it's really more for, she kind of does OT and sensory work as well. So, um, she's kind of, uh, all encompassing and we love her. He's been going there for a year now. And she's like the greatest thing ever. So anyway, that has been amazing. He's made huge strides uh, socially and with his anxiety and whatnot. Um, school is still like academically a really, really big struggle, which is why we sought out further evaluation and found out about his uh, learning uh, disabilities. So um, that's the one of the first questions I usually get. Also, what is it like? How do I do it? Um, through the grace of God, I really don't know what else to say. Um, it is so hard some days, um, and some days we just don't even really get to school because I have my own challenges too. Besides the ADD, I also have migraines and I get them and get headaches and bad headaches and migraines fairly frequently. Um, I see a chiropractor and all of that, and I've tried medication and I, anyway, um, that's just, I've had it my whole life. So since I was seven, as a matter of fact, so, um, that can make it hard too. And stress is one of my bigger triggers. Um, and yeah, life can be stressful. We get out of the house a lot. We do a lot of activity. We do a lot of, um, physical, like, you know, activity. Um, and we just try to keep him moving. We try to, um, do a lot of, he sits on a yoga ball during school time um, he can change position as frequently as he needs to. Um, we try to do tons and tons of hands-on activities. We, um, try to like make everything as like visual or kinesthetic as possible. He's not an auditory learner. So, um, and we try to keep like writing to a minimum cause that's his least favorite activity. I'm going to probably run out of storage. So I'm going to split this into two parts. So these videos aren't massive. Um, but yeah, I will go into more detail on what we actually do on the specifics of the homeschooling techniques and stuff I do and what's worked for him and what hasn't. Um, but I just wanted to get this out there because there wasn't a lot of stuff on what it's like homeschooling somebody who has these challenges. Um, and especially if you have those challenges as the teacher. <laughs>